Hi cuties! I got a ring light for Christmas. I hope this doesn't look awful. I just got home from work so I don't look the greatest, but I need to film this video. As you can see next to me, these are boxes of books and I need to book haul them. I mean, I don't need to. It's not vital to my existence that I show you all of these books and then subsequently have you all shame me for sending my money. But these are all from bookoutlet.com's Black Friday sale. So I bought a lot of books for really, really cheap and I saved over a thousand dollars. Just saying. If I had bought all these books at their actual full price, I would have spent like I think it was like $1,200. I did not spend nearly that much. So I think I made a pretty good deal here. I also bought a few books from Better World Books and I also had one that was pre-ordered. So I'm just gonna go through the books that I've recently gotten and let's just do this. So let's haul some books. And hopefully this lighting isn't bad. I don't know, I've never used a ring light before and I'm using one and I don't know, does this look okay? I'm not good at this. The first book I got was my pre-order of Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is the second book in the Orisha trilogy? Might be a trilogy? I'm not sure. But Children of Blood and Bone is the first book. Here's the second one. Can't wait to read it. Then I got four books from Better World Books. Technically I bought six. One they emailed me and said was out of stock and I went fine. The fifth one is MIA. I don't know where it is, but it's part of a series that I was trying to purchase the complete series. And now I have two of those books, and then I have two more of those books in Book Outlet, but uh, still missing the other one. So those books are part of The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. So I have The Invisible Library, which is book one. Look, you can see the reflection of the ring light. And I have The Lost Plot, which I think is the fourth and then i got the fourth book in the great library series by rachel kane smoke and iron Ooh, can you see it shiny i really want to read these books i've had both of these series on my list for a long time because they all involve libraries and secret libraries these both have the librarians feel so if you've ever seen the movies the librarian or the tv series the librarians which i freaking love these books give me those feels and the last book i got from better world books that arrived is me delving into the world of adult romance and that is the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Sorry, the ring light maybe is a bad idea for this. This is the same author who wrote The Bride Tag, which I thoroughly enjoy. We'll see what I think of The Kiss Quotient. I think people are pretty split on if they like The Kiss Quotient or not, so we'll see where I fall. Let's open some boxes. Ooh. So speaking of The Invisible Library, we have The Mass City. I think this is the third book? I don't know. It might be the second book, I don't know. We'll see. The Trial of Lizzie Borden by Kara Robertson. I think this might be a little mix of fact and fiction. So we'll see about Lizzie Borden. Then we have All the Ever Afters by Danielle Teller. This is the untold story of Cinderella's stepmother. I love a good retelling. In fact, this year I plan to have a whole month dedicated to story retellings. I'm trying to delve into other genres that I don't normally delve into. Like Lizzie Borden, it's not a genre that I particularly get a lot. Same with thrillers. I'm trying to get into some thrillers and I have here, There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I do love the cover. I think it's, it's cool. It's got a good feel. It's short and it should be a good thriller. I do have a few thrillers. Speaking of which is another thriller. A Noise Downstairs by Linwood Barclay. I love the tagline, you're losing your mind or about to lose your life. Oh, I was wondering what this was. Is this typewriter keys? I thought the cover was blinds and I think they're actually like typewriter. And then I did a stupid thing. I did a thing where I bought a book that I already own. And so it's giveaway time. This is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. And I'm gonna give this book away along with a copy of King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo because my sister bought me a signed copy for Christmas. And I'm gonna do a giveaway. I'll give more details at the end of this video, but you can win a copy of The Kingdom and King of Scars because I 
don't need multiple copies of the same book. I'm gonna put that one over there. Next up, I have a sequel of one that's on my shelf. No, I have not read it. As She Ascends by Jodi Meadows. This is the sequel to Before She Ignites. I think they might be fun reads. They do kind of fall into the category of pretty skinny girl in a pretty dress on a cover. And you know me, not a fan. We shall see. I got it for like $2. Why not? Delving into some historical thriller fiction, The Hummingbird Dagger by Cindy Ansi. I've seen this one on like Bookstagram a lot too. What do we got next? So I kind of went a little crazy and normally I try to buy books in order, but I didn't do that for this sale because I figured, you know what? It's there. Why not? So this is the sequel to Magonia. This is Airy. Oh God, can you see it? It's so shiny by Maria Devana Headley. Heedly, not sure, but it has a quote from the Bray on it, so I trust Libba Bray a lot and Neil Gaiman, so that's good. I don't own Magonia yet. I feel like sending me Magonia, go ahead, but I need it in a hardcover because I like my series to match. I don't mind getting paperbacks, it's just like all of them have to be paperbacks or all of them have to be hardcovers. None of this mixing crap. Which is why I really hate when books get new covers like the Diviners. The Diviners got new, brand new covers, but they didn't print the first book in the new cover in a hardcover. They just printed it in paperback and I'm like, excuse you, no, because now none, they don't match. But I'm still gonna keep them all in hardcover. I'm not gonna flip flop between paperback and hardcover for one series. You don't do that. I'm fine, I'm a normal person, hi. Next up we have This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. I found this actually as an audiobook first and then I saw it on Book Outlet and went, why not? But this deals with like, hackers it's very interesting because it doesn't feel like the cover has a lot to do with computers but it does on the back at least the way that the text is i don't think you guys can see it because of the ring light is the ring light a mistake i don't know all right there's three more in this box we've got oh i love this cover i loved the cover when i saw it and now i love this even more newt's emerald by garth nix this was a, a definite cover grab book it's very short in the high 200 so this is kind of a historical mystery it just looks pretty and um yeah that's why so i don't read a lot of zombie books either even though i do own this series for the most part so there is a series called rotten ruin by jonathan mabry and this is his latest book broken lands which is kind of part of it. I'm not sure because it's Broken Lands book one, but it's also considered Rotten Ruin book six or seven, I think. I own the entirety of Rotten Ruin. No, I have not read it. Why do you ask? This is still kind of part of the universe, I think, if not a continuation. I didn't realize that the person on the cover is fighting with a hockey stick. Not that I'm like a fan of hockey or anything. I just didn't realize that was what was on the cover. And the last book I've got is, I think this is a YA contemporary romance, and that is Fake It Till You Break It by Jen Nguyen. Sorry if you can't see it, it's too shiny. This is a kind of fake dating scenario book, which, yes please. Box one is done. I thought I lost my... Also, here's the real shame. Bookoutlet.com had their Boxing Day sale, and I may or may not have bought 41 more books. Don't judge me. All right, so this is another sequel to a book that I own. I have not read yet. It's the sequel to Blood Rose Rebellion, and that is Lost Crow Conspiracy by Rosalind Eve. I like this cover a lot. I don't think you can see it because it's already a white cover with my white light. There you go, kind of see it, right, right, right? I, I love how the cover feels though. The crow's feathers are raised. Love it. Next up is a book that I just random happenstance found on bookoutlet.com, and that is Teen Spirit by Francesca Leah Block. This is a witchy book. Looks really cute though. I think it has some romance because the the Ouija board, the um, whatchamacallit, is in the shape of a heart, but it's witchy, and I think this will be cute. When We Caught Fire by Anna Godverson. I don't actually remember what this one's about, but it's been on my want to buy list for a while. Historical fiction. I've bought a lot of historical fiction, I think. Speaking of historical fiction, we've got Carols in Chaos by Cindy Ancy. Historical romance and mystery and stuff, and it's a wintry book not that i mean december's almost over so so i bought two of these books we're gonna be pulling books just kind of randomly because they don't organize them by their 
you know, series, but this is the third book in the books of Bayern, and that is River Secrets by Shannon Hale. These are all kind of, I guess, these are also retellings, because there is The Goose Girl, which is also somewhere in these boxes. I bought books one and three, but I don't have two and four, because they're not available on Book Outlet. Next is one I'm super excited about. I have not even seen the movie for this, but the movie looks amazing, and I really want to watch it. It was one that came out, I think, last year, and that is Anna and the Apocalypse by Katherine Turner. This is a Christmas zombie book. There you go. And I just remember seeing the trailer of this girl, this dancing to her iPod in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. So I'm very excited to read this one. I hope I get to it soon. Oh, oh. I have a book in here I didn't order. They threw in the book Cornered by Ron McLean. I didn't order this. Yeah, I definitely did not order this. I'm very confused. Hijinks highlights late nights and insights. Hosts of CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. I did not order this book. <laughs> I'm gonna just set that there. Okay. Sure. So instead, we're gonna talk about The Unlikelies by Carrie Firestone. This is a story all about how this girl named Sadie it becomes a hero from rescuing a baby in distress and now she's internet famous along with some other internet famous hometown heroes and they form an unlikely friendship so that should be cute another sequel to a book i don't own the first one of but that is one giant leap by heather kaczynski and this is a sequel to dare mighty things which is a sci-fi book want to read it but need to get the first book first but hey now i already have the second book so now i do have suitors and sabotage by cindy ancy which is the first book in her See, I don't know if they're a series or if they're all just different companion novels. But I did the bad thing that I said I hated doing and I have a hardcover and a paperback. And I just hate it because like they're different sizes and different feels and whatever. I keep thinking I own this book but I don't because I have all these other yellow books. But this is not one of those yellow books and that is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Ooh, there's a new foreword by Jenny Han in this one. So this is kind of historical fiction, kind of fun. I think it's going to be fun. It's yellow has to be fun, right? Then we have a book that I read as an ebook and wanted a physical copy because I liked it so much and that is The Brilliant Death by Amy Rose Capetta. And this is about shape-shifting people's a special type of person who have special powers and Theodora can transform things. And then she meets Cielo and Cielo is kind of this gender fluid character who also shapeshifts into other things but changes from male to female quite regularly, teaches Theodora how to do that, and they have this really beautiful story together while also dealing with crazy plots. I really like it and I feel like there should be a sequel. I hope there is because this could use one. Next up we have another book that I put on my list a long time ago. Couldn't tell you what it's about because I liked it for the cover and that is Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. It's just so pretty. Just look how pretty that is. This is a historical fantasy and it's just so shiny. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon. This is alternative historical fiction because it shows that the Axis powers have won and now there's a motorcycle race. So the person competing in this is competing in this race in order to meet Hitler so that they can kill Hitler. Fun. And the last book in this box is the final of a trilogy. The two books that I own and now I can actually read them because I own them all. The Emerald Sea by Rochelle Mead. I'm excited to read these because I like Rochelle Mead's writing. I did enjoy Vampire Academy. I would like to read her Glittering Court. This is the third book in the Glittering Court and should be nice and good. Did you take a bath? <laughs> he took a bath. We're getting there. <laughs> Big boxes now. Ow. I nearly broke my foot. We're fine. The first book that I pull out of this one is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So Darius is a fractional Persian because his mom is half 
um, and his, it doesn't say actually what his father is. He goes back to Iran and doesn't feel like he fits in because he speaks better Klingon than Farsi. This is kind of a finding himself story. I think it's also an LGBT romance. Might be, I don't want to say that ahead of time. I feel like it might be. Oh, it's a big buck. It's a big thick baby. This is the second book is European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodora Goff. Wow, you is a you are way bigger than I thought you would be. It's a sequel to The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. That is 706 pages. Next up is The Small Baby, Girl Stolen by April Henry. I read her book, um, The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die this year, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good thriller, and this one seems like it will also be a good thriller. So another Shannon Hale book I have is Book of a Thousand Days. Think about her refusing to marry and now she's stuck in a tower. And that feels very Rapunzel to me. Next up, we have The Boundless by Kenneth Oppel. This is a story on a train. This is a thriller on a thriller or an ad, kind of a, an adventure featuring a train. There's not actually a synopsis on this paperback except for like two lines here and just says climb aboard the boundless the most magnificent train ever built magic and danger loom around every bend and the hardest trick is staying alive now, there's my other shannon hale there is the goose girl told you i got the goose girl oh i got a signed copy of sea fire by natalie c parker now here's the thing i normally steer away from kind of piratey books i don't know why i just don't like the ocean all right i don't like books set on ships i don't like pirates and well i don't like stories really are centered around pirates i was never really a big fan of pirates in the caribbean i'm sorry and that's just purely it's purely the aesthetic of it i don't like the aesthetic i don't like that they're all always wet too because when you're on a ship you're gonna get covered in waves and it's so easy to tip over and like there are sharks i don't like the ocean i'm a landlocked girl okay I don't do the beach and things like that. And a lot of pirate stories and deal with everybody getting soaking wet in a big scary storm washing up on a beach where they're covered in sand. That's my rant. I'm trying to be better about it and I have bought Sea Fire, so... I feel like they're all gonna get really wet and really sandy in it though. We have a sequel to a book I still don't own. It is a sequel to Across the Universe by Beth Revis. This is A Million Suns. This is a sci-fi book. Which again, sci-fi, not one that I read a lot, but I did like a lot of sci-fi this year, so I'm hoping to keep on that trend. But speaking of sci-fi, we're gonna talk about a contemporary romance. <laughs> Love, fortunes, and other disaster. I don't know if it's really contemporary, actually, because it does deal with magic because it's love is real is is in this town if you follow the love for fortunes you'll always marry your happy your high school sweetheart or something but then our main character finds out that her fortune <coughs> says she'll never find love and like uh, relatable but she's not the only one it's kind of fantasy but also very contemporary romance then we have a sequel to a book i do own which is endless water starless sky which is the sequel to Bright Smoke, Cold Fire by Rosamund Hodge. This was a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Granted, I do hate Romeo and Juliet. I'm not a fan of it. So next is a sequel to a book. I have yet to buy the first one of Mist, Metal, and Ash, which is the sequel to Ink, Iron, and Glass by Gwendolyn Clare. Alternate history book, alternate 19th century Italy. Next is one I'm very excited to read, and that is The Girl King by Mimi Yu. This just looks great. This looks so good. It deals with sisters. It deals with female rulers, obviously, Girl King. It deals with Asian culture, Asian fantasy history kind of thing. I'm all about that. Let's go. Let's go. And another one I'm ready to go for is Tests of the Road by Rachel Hartman. Hey, hey, it's Tests of the Road. Hey, <laughs> this deals with dragons. Originally, I steered away from buying this. I thought it was a retelling of Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and it's not, so I'm glad because I don't like Tess of the D'Urbervilles. It's a classic I'm not a fan of. Tess gets a dragon, so that's all I need to know. This one's fully shrink-wrapped. Long May She Reign by Rhiannon Thomas. I believe this is a fantasy based on Norse mythology. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. It looks good, though. Next up, we've got the third book in a trilogy, Two of which I own, so now I can read it. That is Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. This is the third book in A Rebel of the Sands, which is a 
uh, Middle Eastern fantasy, and I wanted to read it for a long time, but have not. I am really sad, though, that they did change the covers, because the first book's cover is gorgeous, and I don't know why they changed it to these covers. These aren't as captivating as the first one is. I don't know. I have a certain aesthetic of book covers that I like, and they switched it up on that one. Not a fan. And hey, it's the last Invisible Library book, The Burning Page. I believe this is the second book in the series. I could be wrong. I have almost all the ones that I ordered. The Dead Enders by Erin Salden. I don't know, It's it seems like mystery contemporary. It deals with an arsonist and secrets and there's some mystery thing going on, but I do like the cover of this one. I like, I am a fan of the new illustrated covers that have really taken the book publishing world by storm. And I have the fourth book in an entire series that I now own, and that is The Merciless 4. This is Last Rites. This, I don't know, I feel like The Merciless is Mean Girls, but Witches? I'm not sure. I could be thinking of a whole other book. Now I can read these, and they're not that long of books, so I feel like... Yay! I'm really excited about short books. Next up, we've got Life Like, which is part of this new series. Um, very, I think it is science fiction. It deals with robots. I loved Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman for the whole Illuminae series. I am ready to just delve into all of their work this coming year. Next up is a sequel to a book I do own, and it is the sequel to Honor Among Thieves by Rachel Kane and Anne Aguirre. And this is Honor Bound. I have not read Honor Among Thieves. I've been hesitant to because I really didn't enjoy Anne Aguirre's Razorland series, but I kind of feel like I will like Rachel Kane's great library so I'm really banking on Rachel Kane for this book for the the duology of it so far I don't know if there's gonna be a trilogy fingers crossed the next book I have is a short story compilation and you guys know me not a huge fan of short stories it's not because I don't like short stories as a concept I just get mad that I read a short story and I like it so much but then there's no more and I want a full book of that story. But I bought another little anthology, and that is We Are Where the Nightmares Go and Other Stories by C. Robert Cargill. There are 10 stories, 10 spooky, spooky stories. Next up, I did not realize how tiny of books these are. This is the Binti trilogy. Um, oh, that's home, sorry. Uh, we've got Binti, The Night Masquerade, and Home. And they're so tiny. This book is 101 pages. The Night Masquerade is, is the biggest one of them and it's only 203 pages. These are so tiny. I had no idea. Cool. That'll be really nice and quick reads. Next up we have... Oh, do I own the first one? I don't know if I bought the first one of this. Rise of Fire by Sophie Jordan. I love the cover. It's very pretty. It is short. Short books 2020 because I have a massive 2020 goal, which you'll see in my 2020 goals and resolutions video. Next, we have one that feels very much like Zetai Karashi, which if you don't know Zetai Karashi, it's a manga, anime, and drama. I watched the drama of it in Japan. I do believe Korea has made their own Korean drama of it, but I don't care because I love the Japanese version so very much. And this is Bare and Found Parts. And I think this is a story of a woman who builds herself a boyfriend. Oh yeah, it's by Sarah Maria Griffin. Not just, not just building a boyfriend, but you're also kind of made of robot parts. This will be really interesting. I think that'll be a very fun read. Another spooky book, The Truth Lies Here by Lindsay Klingel. What's going on in Bone Lake? The truth will surprise you. Wow, what a clickbaity tagline there. Now for a book that I've read. This is the old cover of it because it did get a new revamped cover and a revamped title, and that is Royals by Rachel Hawkins, also known as Prince Charming. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I love it. I'm excited to read more of Rachel Hawkins. I do own um, some of her other books, but now I have a copy of this because I read this as an audiobook, and I don't mind this, this title. In fact, everybody seems to, like, I love the cover of Prince Charming. I'll give you that. However, I'm not a fan of the title change because it's not really about 
Prince Charming. It is about royals. So I don't know how I feel about the title change, but I do like the cover change. Now for another thrillery book, we have The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I, I did read Kara Thomas's uh, The Darkest Corners this year, and I enjoyed it. Oh no! Oh, this is folded. The the flappy flap on the inside. We're gonna fix that, baby. Then we've got a book that I think is a very pretty cover, and that is The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tuchulk. Tuchulka? Oh, this is a dark fantasy dealing with people called Mercies and their death traitors. So they kill the old and sick for meager pay. So kind of a reaper situation here. Then we have Mark's Woman by Rati Merotra. This is another fantasy book, as you can tell. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I love this cover. This is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, who is also a booktuber. This is a retelling of Midsummer's Night Dream. I did not realize it's a paperback and it's got the raised font and I love the texture of it. I don't think she makes YouTube videos anymore, but she was. I don't know. Next we have The Beast Player by Nahoko Uehashi. That is even a really difficult name for me to say and I speak Japanese fluently. Nahoko, that's an interesting first name. Uehashi I know, but Nahoko is... that's a new one for me. This is a girl who can communicate with beasts. And I love that concept. It's actually a concept I'm writing right now. This looks really beautiful and amazing, and I hope there is an anime of it. Oh, can I lift this? Can I lift this? Oh, God. Over the leg. Woo! Last box. The first book we have here is the third book in an Ember in the Ashes trilogy. That is Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I have not read this trilogy yet, but now, I can. Actually, I think there's a fourth book coming out now, too. But now I can read it. And back into our contemporary romance, we have I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Goo. This deals with a girl who likes K-dramas. And while I'm not a huge fan of K-dramas, I am of J-dramas, so fairly similar. Oh my god, there are so many books in this box. Next up, we've got The Blood Spell by C.J. Redwine. This is the fourth book in the Ravenspire series retellings again. And this is the latest one, I believe, as well. I, I guess this is more Cinderella since it is the pumpkin. And I'm excited to finally delve into these during my retelling month. Now let's get into some Vikings. Vikings are really taking the world by storm again, I think. Vikings are, again, not one of my favorite topics because they deal with a lot of boats. I've already explained my thing about boats, okay? This is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. This is actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. So that's good news for me. How do you kill a god? You forget to cherish her. Oh wait, that's wrong. Next up, this was definitely a cover grab. Cure for the Common Universe by Christian McKay Heidecker. Jackson is being committed to video game rehab. That's all I need to know. Nice try, Jane Sinner. This deals with kind of I believe like a Big Brother scenario, like the TV show. She ends up on House of Orange. It's a student-run reality show, and it just seems ridiculous. Then we, ooh, whoops. I didn't order this either. I already own this book. Okay, I have now gotten two books that I did not order, and that is The Wicked Will Rise by Daniel Page. I already own this book. I own the entire Dorothy Must Die series. It's not on my packing slip. Why? Okay. What is happening? I don't mind free books, but I'd like free books that I A, would like, and B, don't already own. So next up, we have River Keep by Martin Stewart. This is a historical fantasy mystery? It's another one of those beautiful covers that I'm like, well, I got it. It was very similar to Newt's Emerald when I found it. So I think I found that at the same time and went, look at those pretty covers. Bink, bink. A book that I've heard a lot of people talk about, and that is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Han. It's a Christmas Carol retelling, so I think that'll be good. Next up, we've got Wild Card by Marie Lu, and now I can finally read Roar, Warcross and Wild Card together. I know some people didn't really like the sequel to Warcross but we'll see how I feel about it once I read it. All right, big book alert. Not as big as 
European travel for the monstrous women. This is the third book in the Tales of a New World series, and that is Wind Rider by PC Cass. I own the other two. I can now read this trilogy, even though they are massive. Hopefully I can do it. A small book, yay! Another kind of mystery thriller. Very shiny. It's The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. It's in Alaska. Next up, even though I said I probably wasn't going to finish this trilogy, I think I will now as soon as my friend gets me the second book back. But this is the third book in Wildwood, and that is Wildwood Imperium. I'm going to try to read the rest of these physically. Oh, there are color pictures in this one. Cute. Okay. Hopefully I like it more because I just really hated the audiobook. Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This has some crazy hype. Again, another 50-50 on whether or not people like it or hate it. I want to see where I fall into that spectrum. Next two books are books I've already read as an audiobook and loved them and wanted a copy. That is Sadie by Courtney Summers. I really, really liked Sadie. I think everybody should read Sadie because it features a main character who has a stutter, which is not something you see a lot of. And the audiobook really does it well. It's also like a podcast. It's half podcast, half the story. So it kind of goes back and forth on the timeline. And I really liked it, so I wanted to have a physical copy of it. The other one that I super duper liked this year, and it's even prettier when you hold it. Wowzies. But that is The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth. Sorry, it is, it's a white cover. It's a silvery cover. So in a ring light, this is gonna be a problem. This is Le Gorgeous Cover. I highly recommend it. It's a very good look into the psyche of kids who have been to a Narnia-esque like place and actually have real reactions to being deprived of that place. Next up, a sequel to a book I own. This is a sequel to Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. This is Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie C. Dow. I guess this is also a retelling of Evil Queen. Very pretty cover. I love this cover. I love the red and the black and the gold and the shiny. A Room Away from the Wolves by Nova Rensuma. I don't know how to classify this. This might be contemporary. I guess this is kind of just a dramatic contemporary book. Looks good, which is why I bought it. Then I bought a duology dealing with Ships on the Ocean, I'm trying my best. The Glass Bear and Cursed Sea by Lauren De Stefano. Fantasy, let's go. Deckled Edges, all right. Then I found a book series that I think is going to be kind of hilarious. The Potion Diaries by Amy Allward. So we have The Potion Diaries, Going Viral, and The Potion Diaries Royal Tour. I actually don't know the order, but it's like a comedy fantasy. When the Princess of Nova accidentally poisons herself with a love potion meant for her crush, she falls crown over heels in love with her own reflection. Whoops. I feel like this is going to be a very fun trilogy to read. I think this is the second in a series. This is a medieval fairy tale. It is called The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest by Melanie Dickerson. Uh, there are a few others that I can't seem to remember their name. I think it's like a Robin Hood telling. It's it, it kind of Robin Hoody, maybe? Because it's a beautiful maiden who poaches to feed the poor. So I feel like it's a little bit Robin Hood, but might that might be as close as we get. And we have another Emma Mills book. Unfortunately, this one's in hardcover and the other book is in paperback, but it's okay because they're not a part of a series. They're separate standalone books. And that is Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. Sorry for the camera angle shift. The battery died. It deals with a marching band and that's where it got me. Because yes, I was in a marching band. Next up, I got a book that I already own. Uh, or I did own, and I lent it to someone who will probably never give it back to me, but that is A School for Unusual Girls by Kathleen Baldwin. Highly recommend you guys reading this series. I am very excited to read the next book in the series, which is Harbor for the Nightingale, but my first copy of this has gone to a person who will probably never give it back, and that frustrates me. So I went ahead and grabbed a copy on Book Outlet, because they had it and I went sure. This is the final book in the saga of me trying to buy piratey ocean themed 
books and that is These Rebel Ways by Sarah Roche. I have not read anything else by Sarah Roche but I do own her trilogy Snow Like Ashes and uh, I don't know people seem to really like this one so we will see if I like it too. Four books left. Another collection of short stories. These are fairy tales. Oh wow the font is very tiny. <laughs> Oh, focus. Yeah, that's a very tiny font. That's not nice. We have the Starlit Wood new fairy tale, and it has Shauna McGuire, Jeffrey Ford, Naomi Novik, and a bunch of other people. Anthology of fairy tales. Then we have the third book in a trilogy. So now I completed a lot of trilogies with this book outlet massive book haul. That is Bright We Burn by Kirsten White, which is the third book in Anne I Darken. Again, another series that's kind of hit or miss for people. I think it's a Dracula retelling. Pomegranates? Ooh, does this deal with Persephone? That's the thing I associate pomegranates with is Persephone and Hades. I don't know. And then the sequel to a book that I do own is Genesis by Brendan Reich. I've literally forgotten but I know people have praised the crap out of Nemesis which is the first book. It might be dystopian? Don't quote me on that. The last book that I have is called Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. I really like the cover for this one as well if you can see the illustration. This deals with friends and one of the friends has died and the other two friends have been accused of her murder and so there's mystery and stuff in this. We'll see. Oh my god, it's a signed copy. I just noticed that. hey -o! Really raking it in with some signed books. And that is it, my, my peeps, my friends. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that giveaway. So I've got these three here plus King of Scars, which is on the other end of my room, which is why I am not holding it. But for some reason, Book Outlet sent me two extra books. They are definitely not on my packing list. Or why not? The Kingdom, The Wicked Will Rise, and Cornered, and King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. If you would like a one of these books, I will happily give away each book separately. Uh, to four winners. Put a comment below which book you want the most and you do have to be a subscriber like this video. Please tell me a 2020 reading resolution. Okay, whether it be the goal of how many books or what type of books you want to read more of or less of, whatever it is. Put that in the comments along with the book that you want to win the most. Could be any of these or the King of Scars because it's way over there and I am <coughs> stuck in a wall. I have barricaded myself with books. Hope you've all enjoyed my first ring lighted video. Yup, it's a ring light. <laughs> I don't know if I've done this right. Cool. Leave all those down below in the comments and you can win some books and I'll see you next time. Cuties, bye!